the first question. Um, so here is the example. So Adnan operates uh, a small store that makes and sells dolls in Toronto. The total cost function for dolls is given by the total cost function, which is a function of quantity, uh, obviously, is equal to 72 plus 4Q plus um, 2Q square. So this is the total cost function. Uh, let Q denote the number of dolls sold in a day. All right. Assume that the market for dolls in Toronto is perfectly competitive. So A, what is the average cost? Uh, what is the average variable cost? And what is the marginal cost? Well, it's simple. So here, uh, this is the fixed cost term. So it's fixed because it doesn't depend on the quantity level. And this is therefore the variable cost because it varies with the quantity you choose. Well, if you would like to find the average variable cost, therefore, all you have to do, remember the average, uh, ver uh, average something is, is just uh, the, that thing per outcome. So if we're talking about average variable cost, that means the variable cost per outcome. So that basically means the variable cost divided by the quantity. So what is the variable cost? It's 4Q plus 2Q square. If you divide this guy by Q, all you're going to get is 4 plus 2Q. All right. Well, very good. Well, what else? Uh, the average cost. Well, some, some textbooks call it average total cost. Some of them just call it average costs, as you wish, I don't mind. Um, so it is basically the total cost divided by quantity. So it's 72 divided by Q plus four plus two Q. All right, and then uh, the marginal cost. Well, the marginal cost is always the derivative of the cost function, the total cost function with respect to quantity. So it's the slope of the cost. And it's therefore 4 plus 4q. So it's not exactly equal to average variable cost, so be careful about it. So that's what part A is. So part B, in the long run, what price will Adnan charge? And how many dolls would he sell per day? Okay, so in the long run, so long run com competitive market equilibrium means uh, each operating firm is operating, uh, I'm sorry, uh, operating at a quantity level uh, that is the efficient scale, meaning uh, if you remember the individual firms, so this is quantity, this is, you know, everything related to money. So this is the average variable cost. Well, clearly average variable cost doesn't have U shape here. It's a, actually an increasing straight line. And then the marginal cost curve uh, basically hits it at the lowest value. So this is basically the how much quantity uh, the perfectly competitive firm is going to produce in the long run. Why is that? Well, because in the long run, remember, the market price has to be equal to the marginal cost, which is equal to average variable cost. So that, uh, I'm sorry, this is not average variable cost. I'm sorry about this. This is average total cost. Uh, so average total cost, uh, my mistake. So, um, so the price is equal to uh, average total cost in the long run. Well, because the profit, the long run uh, profit uh, of a, a perfectly competitive firm has to be zero so that no outsider would have incentive to enter to this market to make profit and no insider or the firm, firms operating inside this market have incentive to exit this market. So zero basically represents the zero economic profit. So if you exit the market, uh, your outside option is zero. All right. So for that reason, uh, zero economic profit and zero outside option. So means that you do not have incentive to leave this market. So in the second part, in the long run, what price will Adnan charge? Well, remember the price, everybody is a price taker. And so the price that they're going to charge must satisfy this. Well, how do we find this? Well, obviously we have to find the point where 
the marginal cost is equal to average total cost. So I have the marginal cost, I have the average total cost. And so if you set them equal, so marginal cost equals average total cost is going to give me 4 plus 4q equals ATC is this guy, 72 divided by q plus 4 plus 2q. So 4s cancel out, 2q, 4q, so I have 2q equals 72 divided by q. So if you do the cross product, you're going to have 2q, well, this 2 and 72 simplifies to 36. So that means q squared is equal to 36. Obviously q is minus or plus uh, 6, but we know that quantity cannot be minus. So therefore it's plus 6. All right. So um, he is going to uh, produce 6 units of output. And well, what price does this correspond? Well, again, you can uh, in, uh, plug this quantity value into the ATC cost curve or the marginal cost curve, doesn't matter, because they are equal to each other at that quantity level, and then find the p-value. Well, obviously ATC is a more complicated functional form, so let's use the marginal cost. So therefore, price equals uh, marginal cost at price, uh, quantity 6. So 4 plus 4 times 6. So this is 24 plus 4, 28 dollars. All right, so the market price is going to be $28. And, and this producer is going to produce six units. All right? So what is next? Well, this part C is asking if the price of those increases to $40, how much profit would Adnan make? All right, well, so the price uh, in the long run should be 28 uh, so that the Adnan is making zero profit. But what if for some reason, it jumps to 40. So all of a sudden, let's say uh, a huge, uh, I don't know, uh, a, 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 an agreement uh, is made with some country. And so a huge number of tourists pour into this city. And so uh, the demand increases and hence the, uh, sh uh, in the short run price increases. Uh, so let's suppose the new price is 40. So what's going to be the profit? So if you remember the lecture notes, I said, well, the marginal cost curve is the supply curve of a perfectly competitive firm. And that means the firm is going to produce this Q level of output. Let's call it Q star. So how can I find that Q star? Well, I find this Q star by basically setting marginal cost to price. So price is $40, marginal cost is 4 plus 4Q. So when I set them up, that means Q is equal to 9, right? And so this is 9 units of output. So instead of producing 6, he's going to produce 9 units. Well, what is going to be the profit? Well, there are a bunch of different ways of finding profit, right? Uh, but the simplest, well, I mean, one way is... Uh, profit is equal to P times Q minus total cost, which is price is 40 times quantity is 9 minus total cost of producing 9 units. So it's 72 plus 4 times 9 plus 2 times 9 square, right? Whatever that number is. I don't know if it is easier, but an alternative could be, you know, as we graphically did, so we calculate the ATC here, right? So what is ATC when you produce nine units? So ATC, the average total cost of producing nine units is 72 divided by nine, so which is eight. Uh, so this is eight plus four plus two times nine, which is 18. So this is to me, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're not yet uh, in the, the found the profit, but it, to me, it seems like an easier way. So 18 plus 4, 22, uh, plus 8, 30. So this is 30. And so the profit is basically 40 minus 30 times the number of quantity you produce. So P is, remember, pi is, I'm sorry, uh, price minus ATC times quantity. So here price is 40, ATC is 30 times quantity 9. So the profit is equal to $10.90. All right. 
So this is $90 of uh, profit. Any question? All right. Well, then the final part, the market demand for dolls. So up until this point, by the way, if you realize, we didn't talk about what the market demand is. Uh, well, because we don't really need the market demand. But now we would like to find the number of operating firms uh, in the long run. So let's read the question. The market demand for dolls is given by this functional form. Quantity equal, so the quantity demand is equal or supplied is equal uh, 3028 minus P. All right, so P is the market price. Q is the total output. Uh, so Q is the total number of dolls sold in the entire city in a day. In the long run, how many stores will be in dolls business in Toronto? Well, here, obviously, we are making a simplification assumption as what? As, for example, all the uh, suppliers have exactly the same cost function. Because if they have, you know, some have higher cost function, some have lower cost function. So we can't really, I mean, the, the problem could be a, a bit more uh, complicated. So assuming that all the potential producers have exactly the same cost function, what would be the total number of firms operating in this market in the long run? Uh, well, how do we find this outcome? Well, um, kind of simple. So in the long run, so if you remember the graph, so you don't have to graph every time, uh, but I'm trying to explain the reasoning behind the solution. And so this is why I am graphing it. So this is what an individual firm's average total cost and marginal cost curves will look like. So remember we said in the long run, uh, each firm is going to produce six units of output. So this is individual firm, individual firm or producer. And in the long run, the price should be $28. All right. Well, what does that mean? That means in a perfectly competitive market, the market price is also determined by the aggregate supply and the aggregate demand curve. How so? Well, it's the point where the aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve intersect one another. All right. So this is where this point of intersection should be. All right. So remember, so what do we want? Well, we want to know this quantity Q. Well, what is this quantity? Well, this quantity is, so this is a market quantity. So we know that each individual firm will produce six units. So it's six times, uh, let's call it M, where M is number of firms in the long run. Well, by the way, there are few things that we cannot answer in this question. One of them is what would be the short run number of firms in this market when the price is $40, for example. Uh, all right, so, but we can answer this question. So in the long run, we know that each firm should be uh, producing exactly six units of output, assuming that everybody has exactly the same cost structure. So therefore, this is what the total quantity will be. So we need to find the total quantity and then divide it by six to find the number of firms in the long run. But how can I find the total quantity without knowing the supply, the market supply? Well, we don't really need the market supply. We know the market demand curve, remember? And we know that the quantity supply has to be equal to quantity demand. So therefore, you know, by knowing demand is enough, uh, we don't really need to know the supply curve. So anyway, if this is the demand curve and we know that the long run price will be $28. So the quantity demanded or supplied, well, quantity, demanded it should be equal to quantity supplied, which is equal to 3,028 minus P, which is 28. So 3,000. Oh, this is zero. All right. So this is how much total quantity will be supplied. But because each firm can only supply, well, not only, can only, but it's like they're, they're not willing to supply more than that because this is profit maximizing quantity level although their profit is zero, meaning 
if they want to produce more than six or less than six, they're actually going to make negative profit. All right. So therefore six is just break even quantity level. So because there are, I'm sorry, each firm produces six units. Uh, well, then M, the number of firms operating in the long run in this market will therefore be 3000 divided by six. So it's, uh, I think, uh, 500. All right, so in the long run, there will be 500 firms in this market. 